Bodies, the sixth track from the album Twin Fantasy, is easily one of my favorite car seat headrest songs, which seems to be a fairly common sentiment among fans of the band's music. Last year, around Christmas time, I made a video discussing another song from the same album, High to Death, so I figure it'll make for a nice yearly tradition. And for those who aren't familiar with car seat headrest, I'd suggest watching that video first, seeing how this is essentially a part two. Despite being placed quite close together on Twin Fantasy, at tracks 6 and 8, respectively, Bodies and High to Death are about as tonally distinct as any two songs on the entirety of the album. Where the latter is a bitterly melancholic art rock song, the instrumentals alternately quietly reflective and ominously heavy, following the singer at the lowest point of their depression, Bodies is a frenetic electropop-inspired indie rock song, bursting with youthful energy as it evokes imagery of clubs and parties. Beginning with a fast-paced, pulse-pounding drumbeat, which is gradually joined by more instruments, the song launches into an extremely catchy hook before Will Toledo sings the opening lines, following these up with a brief spoken word section. Right off the bat, the central theme of the song is laid out, of embracing a sort of joyous nihilism, abandoning grand pursuits of higher meaning in favor of simply sharing the moment with someone you love. I'm sick of meaning, I just want to hold you. If I had to name the defining traits of the best car seat headrest songs, they would be effective use of reincorporation from Will's prior work, clever metatextuality, brilliant lyricism, impactful use of stream of consciousness style in those lyrics, and highly unique song structure, nearly all of which are on display in bodies. And while this song doesn't technically feature reincorporation from other tracks, these opening lines actually serve as a response to the outro from the previous song, Nervous Young Inhumans, the title being a reference to Toledo's prior stage name from his pre-CSH days. After all, Twin Fantasy is a concept album, telling an overarching story across its ten tracks. And while Bodies is probably the easiest song on the album to jump into without context, it still doesn't exist in a vacuum. Set against the backdrop of a soft instrumental section, the final portion of the fifth track contains a monologue in which the singer muses on a variety of subjects, attempting to convince himself that he is a good person, fully in control of his own desires and actions, incapable of harming those around him, and then reflecting on prior relationship troubles and how quickly time seems to be passing as he ages before ending with the interrupted question, Isn't this where? Which serves as a nice little reference to the final lines of Pink Floyd's The Wall, one of Will Toledo's biggest inspirations in writing Twin Fantasy. This calm reflection is cut short by the explosive, energetic opening of Bodies, followed by the singer exclaiming, That's not what I meant to say at all, signaling either a dramatic shift in the singer's mood, perhaps one they are unable to control, or a more intentional shift in their outlook as they set aside this calm, if somewhat melancholic, introspection to fully embrace life in the moment. Part of what makes Bodies such an interesting song is that in a way, it is designed to sound at first like shallow, if well-produced, club music, simply a rhythm for people to move to without any deeper lyrical meaning to be paid attention to or picked apart. But like many of Carseat Headrest's greatest songs, Bodies contains an extremely unique structure, arguably one of the most complex in Will's entire discography. And almost immediately, Toledo draws attention to this with the spoken word false chorus, asking, is this the chorus yet? And then answering, no, it's just the building of the verse, so when the chorus does come, it'll be more rewarding. This, incidentally, is another hallmark of CSH, metatextuality, or bringing attention to the craft of songwriting as a means of commenting on the artistic process. In my previous video, I described Twin Fantasy as the definitive postmodern album, but in a sense I think it may be more proper to label it as metamodern, as the album doesn't merely deconstruct, 
but reconstructs and re-engages with sincerity, utilizing the knowledge that has been gleaned from various forms of irony and deconstruction. Standard song structure is popular for the reasons that it is both easier to write and more easily accessible to the broadest number of people. And while formulas can vary, a typical song will stick to the pattern of an intro followed by a verse and then a chorus, after which a variation of the verse repeats before the chorus returns, followed by either a bridge or solo, maybe a third variation of the verse, and then a final chorus, frequently altered slightly, with a possible coda. Bodies, however, follows a much more complex route, beginning with an intro that leads into a verse, only for the spoken word false chorus to shift into an alternate verse, then a different alternate verse before finally hitting the first proper chorus. After this, we are treated to variations of the first and second alternate verses with a third verse in polyphony during the latter, an alternate spoken word false chorus leading into a second chorus, which then drops us back into the first chorus, followed by another alternate verse and a false coda in which the song appears to be concluding, only for a bridge to carry us to a new pre-chorus, before the second chorus comes in with the first verse from the beginning of the song utilized as a third chorus in polyphony. And unlike with many of Toledo's most complex songs, which commonly stretch well beyond the 10-minute mark, all of this is fit into only 6 minutes and 47 seconds, which makes the complexity rather easy to overlook if you're just giving it a casual listen. I should also note that at the very end, this song features an easter egg for One Trait Danger, the comedic side project founded by Will Toledo and drummer Andrew Katz, using an altered sample from the song Need to Know Basis. Another thing I and many others appreciate about Car Seat Headrest is that while the band is never afraid to explore serious subject matter, they also don't take themselves too seriously, which not only elevates the authentic, confessional nature of their music, but also allows for some genuinely funny moments from time to time. Anyway, after the initial false chorus, where he draws attention to how the song differs from typical pop fare, Will launches into a pair of alternate verses, followed by the first proper chorus. I would speak to you in song, but you can't sing, as far as I'm aware. At first glance, the meaning behind these lyrics seems to be a standard fixture of indie rock. Adolescent social anxiety and alienation, of feeling estranged from your peers and struggling to fit in, a read that the title bolsters. The song's name, Bodies, is deliberately spelled improperly, using the singular form of body, with an S clumsily tacked on to the end to force it into plurality, perhaps mirroring the feelings of an awkward teenager who still feels alone even when in a social setting struggling to find the courage to express their feelings with lines like, I would speak to you in song, but you can't sing, as far as I'm aware. Lyrics we will return to later, as well as going unnoticed among their peers with lines like, I keep so quiet, it's hard to tell I'm alive, which are contrasted against the following lines, describing everyone else having fun dancing. And, of course, the fact that the relationship that inspired Twin Fantasy had become long distance by the time of the original album's writing in 2011 certainly gives more emphasis to the singer's desire to simply be able to hold their partner and forget everything else. Additionally, Will utilizes his trademark stream of consciousness style here, focusing on imagery of people dancing all around him while he stands on his own, and then stumbling through sentences as he tries to express affection for someone as seen in the intentionally choppy and awkwardly phrased, Those are, you got some nice shoulders. I'd like to put my arms around them. I'd like to put my arms around them. And this meaning is continued with the following variations on the first and second alternate verses. I have enough trouble controlling my own men. Stealing our doll from our parents and grandparents. There's no devil on one shoulder and angel on the other. They're just two normal people.
Again, at a casual glance, the song still appears to simply be about typical teenage social encounters. Not knowing how to dance properly, sneaking alcohol and getting drunk with friends, etc. But a closer read, especially involving some of the later lyrics, reveals a deeper layer of meaning. Will isn't just singing about normal teenage social anxiety, but about his own personal experience growing up gay, and the associated apprehension about publicly displaying romantic affection for fear of ridicule, harassment, and ostracization. Lines like, I keep so quiet, it's hard to tell I'm alive, sung amidst the imagery of a bunch of other teens dancing and having fun, coupled with the singer's desire to put their arms around the subject's shoulders, and yet not doing so, take on a different light when viewed from this angle. There's a definitive sense that it isn't merely the singer's shyness holding them back from reaching out. Likewise, the first lines of the alternate verse shift between being sung and spoken regularly, as if to highlight the confusion and uncertainty within the singer's mind. I would speak to you in song, but you can't sing, as far as I'm aware. But everyone can sing, as you are well aware. Here we see the singer attempting to communicate their feelings to the subject, shifting back and forth between being eager and reluctant, between being certain that things will work out and feeling that there isn't even a point to open up. Additionally, this is the first section of the song to feature polyphony, or the overlapping of different independent sections of music, a technique that Toledo employs to great effect throughout much of his discography. Buried beneath the lines, These are the people that I get drunk with, These are the people that I fell in love with, are the lyrics, But if you keep giving me your empty hands, Man, I am tempted to say, let's find another rope to piss up, boys, because this one has grown old and bitter. Not only does this feed into the narrative of a long-distance relationship, and the resulting lack of physical affection that the singer desperately desires, the empty hands his partner gives him, but these lines specifically are a reference to a Leonard Cohen song, Sing Another Song, Boys, describing a relationship that quickly grows toxic to both parties, another feature that is highly relevant to twin fantasy as a whole. Cohen's song ends with the lines, But let's leave these lovers wondering why they cannot have each other, and let's sing another song, boys, this one has grown old and bitter. The fact that Toledo deliberately buries these lyrics beneath the more carefree lines describing drinking and bonding with his friends, leaving them hidden from casual listeners, mirrors the behaviors of the singer, someone deliberately cloaking their real feelings in order to fit in, worried that they might be abandoned if their friends knew the truth. Here, a specific line from the second track on the album, Beach Life and Death, comes to mind. I pretended I was drunk when I came out to my friends. I never came out to my friends. But I think this second layer of meaning becomes most clear in the lines sung just before the false coda. We can get real horny and keep messing around. We can keep real quiet, won't be making no sounds. I will try my best not to touch your face. Next time, can we please meet at my place? The first half may simply conjure the image of teenaged lovers trying to keep their romance hidden from their parents, but the second half makes things much clearer, with the singer promising their partner to not draw attention to their relationship in public, and asking longingly if they can instead go somewhere private next time, where they will be free to fully be together as a couple. To return to the song's title, even bodies itself takes on an additional meaning when viewed in this light, of someone who feels that they cannot be properly plural as others are due to their sexuality. But beneath this read of the lyrics lies an even deeper level of interpretation, of a fear of mortality as the singer comes to realize how truly fragile everything in life is, a read which becomes much clearer in the next section, where all three layers of meaning are woven together quite beautifully. Well, so what? We're young. We're thin, most of us. We're alive. Most of us.
While it may seem ironic for a song as tonally upbeat and energetic as Bodies to contain such a somber message buried within it, longtime fans of Will Toledo's music will be familiar with his explorations of topics like existentialism, depression, and suicidal ideation. High to Death, which occurs only two tracks later on this very album, features the singer sinking into severe depression, with the lyrics hinting at the bleakest possibilities. And I sat there on the steps, considering death. There were only seconds left of the night. And I said, Hell is the sun burning forever at the center of things. From the existential angst of Boxing Day to the anguish of the coda of strangers, and from the bitter self-loathing of I want you to know that I'm awake, to the heartbreaking loneliness of Anchorite. This willingness to show soul-bearing vulnerability, and refusal to shy from the darkest parts of the human experience, is part of why Car Seat Headrest has won such a devoted fan base. In these lines, Will shifts from the nostalgic recollections of time spent with friends, laid over top lyrics expressing his alienation, that end with This one has grown old and bitter, the only lines clearly discernible in polyphony, to a spoken word segment where he asks, So what? Stating, We're young, we're thin, and we're alive. Almost as half-hearted excuses, while he half-challenges, half-answers the latter two of these assertions himself with a vacant and unconvinced most of us. I interpret this as an inner monologue within the singer's own mind, the optimistic and pessimistic parts of their personality clashing especially given how the spoken line, We're alive, most of us, segues immediately into Toledo singing the second chorus. Don't you realize our bodies could fall apart at any second? I'm terrified your body could fall apart at any second. And then afterwards expressing his desire to simply be with his partner in person. The song's title likewise shares this third meaning. The awkwardly forced plural of the singular form of body highlighting the singer's fears of a deeper existential loneliness, of an inability to truly connect with even those whom they care about most. After this section, the song then slips into a false coda in which it appears to be concluding, with a new, somber acoustic chord progression playing before the lyrics resume. And I know Here, the singer expresses regret at being unable to fully communicate their feelings, but, in fitting with the opening, moves beyond this in favor of simply being able to hold their loved one. And I know that I don't talk a lot, but I know that you don't care a lot. As long as we move our bodies around a lot, we'll forget that we forgot how to talk. After stating this, the second chorus returns, 
in which the singer shares their fears of mortality. But this time, however, it's followed by a reincorporation of the first verse as a third chorus, in which the singer once again returns to that simple yet powerful line, trying his best to set aside his anxieties and desires for a quote-unquote deeper sense of meaning or importance, proclaiming, I'm sick of meaning, I just want to hold you. Once again, I'd like to thank Ethan JP for allowing me to use his artwork in the thumbnail. If you'd like to support this channel, I not only have a Patreon, but I also recently published my debut novel, Winter Without End, with Fenris Publishing, a post-apocalyptic survival story about a dog who makes an uneasy alliance with a wounded wolf in order to survive. As always, links for everything will be in the description. Last time I made a video like this, I recommended a number of CSH songs, so this time I figure I'll turn around and ask you the viewers, what are some of your own favorite car seat headrest songs, lyrics, instrumental sections, and so on? I love seeing people discuss this band's work, and honestly it's a bit strange how much their music has come to mean to me personally over the last few years, so I'm curious to hear from all of you. I'll try to respond to as many of you as I can. In many ways, Bodies exemplifies the best qualities of car seat headrest's style and talents, from complex structure and inventive instrumentation to impactful, beautifully crafted lyrics, and from metatextual commentary on the nature of music and songwriting to meaningful allusions to the myriad artists who inspired and influenced Will Toledo's career. The unique structure of this song, with its three separate choruses that gradually build upon one another before crashing together in a cathartic climax, gives significant instrumental depth and progression to what might at first glance seem like vapid club music, and the reincorporation of the opening lines as a third chorus in the coda provides a deeply rewarding sense of closure. While bodies might lack the sprawling grandiosity of ten minute plus long epics like Beach Life and Death or Famous Prophets, it makes up for that by combining ridiculously catchy hooks with a deceptive level of lyrical depth and instrumental complexity, all wrapped up in an endearing, life-affirming message about cherishing the ones we love, and who love us. Yeah.